What's up? What's up? What's happening, family? How everybody doing out there in virtual land? Woo, it feel good to be here. Yeah, this here, this actually, this actually was my third, my third church home, my third. St. John downtown was my third church home. My first church home, uh, they taught me uh, biblical truths. I learned about the Bible. That was my dad at church. I had to go, had no choice. Had to go to Sunday school, had to go to church, and I had to go 3.30 service. And then at 6 o'clock, we had this thing called BTU, Baptist Training Union. So I know more Bible. Uh, uh, I, matter of fact, I've forgotten more Bible than most of you already know. That was my first church. My second church, my homeboy started a church. And that's when I got creative with the word of God. Amen. That's when I got creative with the word. That's when I knew I could say stuff like how to live holy when you're horny. You know, throw stuff out there like that. I, I knew how to say, you know, things like, you know, if the church shoe fit and all that and then make it biblical. And then St. John downtown. This is my family right here. This is my third church. This is my third church that I was a member of. And what I learned at St. John downtown is that people matter. Love God, love people. As a matter of fact, it's hard being on this stage right now without having to hug 50 people before I get up here. Okay? I know y'all missed that because this is a hugging church right here. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, when we return back into this building, when y'all get back, somebody's going to catch a molestation case because you ain't hugged in so long, okay? It's going to be a me too case on a hug, a good, a good church hug. But anyway, what's up, family? Man, it's good to be here. I wish you all were in the building with me. I haven't been in a church in months. I ain't been in a church in months. Don't even know how to act. Still look good in here. AC still work, okay? So I'm assuming y'all giving, praise God. Continue to do that, all right? Continue to do that. But yeah, I ain't been in church. Now the church I'm a, I go to now, the church I'm a member of, my pastor, he tries to create service for me while I'm at home. It, it, it don't work. I, I've told him, I said it don't work because, you know, first of all, there are some perks going to church virtually. Like for instance, my church started at nine. So I get up at 8.59, you see what I'm saying? No traffic. No parking. I ain't got none of that. I wake up at 8.59. That's the beautiful part. But here's the thing. My pastor always saying stuff like, uh, you know, raise your holy hands. And he wants you to type stuff to him while he talking. And I'm basically, dog, I'm naked. I'm in the bed. Uh, I just wake up, grab my phone. I don't, you know, he, they, they want me to praise and worship. I go to the restroom with the phone. You know, take care of my business in there. And, and, and then, you know, I don't brush my teeth, wash face. Then I go to the kitchen, give me a bowl of cereal or something. You know, I, I ain't with all what, what they trying to, you know, include me in except first Sunday. Now, first Sunday, I'm with him because a pastor say just get something in your hand for communion. He ain't being specific. He say get something, get anything in your hand, you know, to emulate the sacraments. And so you already know, I've went from the grape juice and the cracker to the Hennessy and the honey bun. I got something in my hand. I got something in my hand. Okay, don't judge me. I got something, you know. I do this in remembrance of who? Him. And I do it every first Sunday. Look forward to it. But yeah, it's good. It's good to be here even though we're in a pandemic. Things are still Good, you know, God's still good. You know, it's different, but he's still good. You know, what's the problem is some folk, they have had some what I like to call buyer's remorse. You didn't see the pandemic coming. I didn't either, but you really didn't see it. You know, like I know this one young lady, you know, in February, uh, she went and got her, uh, how can I say this? Uh, in February, she went and got her breastplate of righteousness done. Mm -hmm. Did you get that? Okay, some of you missed it. Okay, uh, she went and got first and second Thessalonians. She got those things, you know, repaired. Oh, the book of Titus. Okay, 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 okay. Anyway, some of y'all got it, some of y'all didn't get it. But anyway, she went and got them done. Then the pandemic hit in March. They shut everything down. Unfortunately, she lost her job. 
and she needed some money, you know, with the rent. And I was like, listen, um, your rent is on your chest. Uh, you call them racks. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, what you gonna need to do, what, what you gonna need to do is see if you can take them things back. I, I, I don't know if you get them back, you know, get your old things back. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But what I'm saying is you had, uh, you didn't see, you didn't see this pandemic, you having buyer's remorse. One of my homeboys, you know, he don't wanna just lose his hair. You know, y'all, I stopped dying my beard. I'm gray now, I'm gray, I'm cool with it. I'm gray, I'm grown and forgiven. But one of my homeboys, he can't let it go. He done lost his hair, so he went and got hair surgery. He went and got his the little stimulation joint. It costs $18,000. He got this in the month of February. $18,000 hair stimulation. Put $6,000 down on it. Huh? Like it's a car. Like, like he gonna drive somewhere. Put $6,000 down on a hair surgery. Well, once the pandemic hit, because he did that in February, in March, pandemic hit. Well, the doctors like that are not deemed essential. They're not essential workers. So he can't go over back to the hospital to get his follicles stimulated. So for three months, he looking like a cross between a chia pet and a chia pet. I mean, that's all he looked like. I mean, just this little wiry hair going everywhere. So I know a lot of people out there, you got buyer's remorse because you didn't see the pandemic coming. And you was like, man, I could use that money because these bills coming. Y'all, now that's one thing. I'm still trying to work because these bills, listen, my bills, I have so many of them, I call them by their real name now. I don't call them bills. I call them Williams, okay? Bill is a nickname. William is the real name. And my bills, they so disrespectful. They don't wear masks. They just coming in. They don't even put the, they don't even put the envelope on my bills no more. You know what I'm saying? They just send the bill. They ain't wearing the mask no more. And so I got to get to work. I got to, I got to answer that phone. I can't be all high sedity and high class no more. Uh-uh. I'm doing all these Zoom shows and all this. Once upon a time, y'all, I wouldn't even use my cash app. I've been having my cash app for a few years now. Never used it because I thought it was begging. I'm not going to lie to you. When I would see people put their cash app up, it's my birthday cash app. Because I mean, back in the day, they would pin the money on them. And, you know, I used to be like, why are they begging? Why are they begging? And then when the cash app came, people always throwing their cash app out. And I'm like, why are you begging? Huh. Well, one of my homeboys called me and said, Marcus, I'm doing a virtual um, comedy show. Want you to be on it. It's going to be on IG Live. I just need you to do 10 minutes. And I was like, man, I ain't about to do that. I ain't no people there. He was like, bro, put your cash, I'm going to put your cash app on there. Folk going to just give you money if they like your jokes. I said, no, nah, I don't do that cash app. That's big. And he said, man, give me that cash app. So he got my cash app. He put it on the screen. Family, I did 10 minutes of comedy and made $555. I, too, now am a beggar. I put my cash app on everything now. Matter of fact, when I pay my bills, I put my cash app on it just in case somebody want to send me some money back. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, yeah, I'm a beggar. I, I read in the Bible. A lot of them beggars got healed. And so I am trying to fall right in line with those that beg. Amen. Amen. Woo! Man, it feel good over there. Y'all don't know how happy I am to be at St. John downtown because I recorded six projects here on this stage. This is the best stage, the best vibe, the best feel in the world right here at this church. That's why I know everybody misses it. And excuse my manners, shout out to Dr. Dr. Rudy Rasmus. When I left here, you wasn't even a master, okay? You was just Pastor Rudy. And now, Pastor Rudy is a doctor. And shout out as well to Dr. Juanita Rasmus. Appreciate you all, love you all, and all that good stuff. Now, let me get to some other things, you know, things that's been going on with me during this particular pandemic. As you all know, uh, Erica and myself, we, uh, we adopted uh, a little girl. You know, it all kicked off here. We adopted a little girl two years ago, uh, going on three years now. Uh, her name is Charlie, Charlie Ray Wiley, Charlie Ray Wiley. She may be the reason why 
this is gray now. Because when I was here, I was all dark. Now, I was using a little that Beijing. I ain't going to lie. I did put a little just, just for me in there. But it wasn't like this. You know, it wasn't like this. And so uh, we got that Charlie. And Charlie is a godsend. However, uh, she has devilish ways. Okay, did you get that? She's a godsend, but she has devilish ways. Like, for instance, we have a neighbor next to us. Our neighbor name is Mr. Ben. Mr. Ben is our neighbor. He's a good neighbor. Mr. Ben, the type of neighbor, when he barbecue, he sends a plate over. That's a good neighbor, okay? Mr. Ben is a good neighbor. All right, in the game on, Mr. Ben go get frozen communion and, and all that type of stuff, and he asks you, hey, I, I got that over here. Now, you know, I ain't saying you need to partake, but I'm just letting you know every now and then my throat is dry, and so I go over there, watch the game, Mr. Ben. He's a good neighbor. I call him Mr. Ben. Mr. Ben is 60-something years old. My wife, Erica, she calls him Mr. Ben, okay? My son, Chase, he calls him Mr. Ben. My mom, who lived with us, she's 68, and she calls him Mr. Ben. But that little girl, Charlie, that two-year-old, she walks right outside and goes, hey, Ben, just disrespectful. Hey, Ben. Everybody said, hey, Mr. Ben. Hey, Mr. Ben. She's talking about, hey, Ben, like they drink cognac and smoke cigarettes together. She two years old, acting, okay, like she been here before. Oh, that Charlie's something else. I tell everybody, if you listen to me on the radio, uh, KTSU 90.9 every morning, I tell everybody, I tell everybody that's here, I will pay the light, I will not pay the light bill, okay, but I will pay Charlie's daycare, okay, okay. We'll sit at that house with the lights off, with candles on. But that daycare bill is going to get paid because she got to go, okay? She got to go. Because if this gray here start getting into my eyebrows and stuff like that, I'm in bad shape. I'm in bad shape. Bad shape. Bad shape. What else can I talk about? Boy, it feels just, just feel good being in here. But y'all ain't. I mean, you here. I'm sorry because I know we want to make like y'all here. But you're not. But I see you anyway. I see you. Get the emojis going. Get the clap things and all that type of stuff that they do online. Now, let me move to some other things. Let me move to some other things because I did a recording on March 15th right before the pandemic. It was the day before they shut down the city. I did a recording, uh, and it was called Bathtubs and Bibles. That's the recording I did, Bathtubs and, and Bibles. Uh, uh, it's about a 57-minute project, and it's all online now because I've been selling it to anybody that wants to buy it. Uh, I told you I got Williams that I have to deal with. But bathtubs and Bibles was my project because I just believe that, you know, uh, when you're in church and you read that Bible, I just believe you need to relax. You know, folk need to relax. Learn how to relax. Save folk. Don't have to be all tight and stiff. And, you know, we can relax. So I grew up in a time where folk took baths. That's what a bath represented. It represented relaxation, okay? Some of you young folk I know right now, you looking on your phone or your computer, and you like, what is a bath? Well, a bath is where there was a tub, okay, a tub. And you fill the tub up with water, okay? And all the kids in the house all had to take a bath together, same time. It's very nasty. Uh, uh, but that's why I don't get sick today, because I grew up taking baths with people. See, that's why right now, you know, I'm in good shape. My immune system's strong, because I grew up bathing with my cousins, okay? And they dirty, too. And I grew up bathing, okay, with, <laughs> with some of my neighbors. I grew up, because you couldn't drain that water, okay? We ain't had to type money for that type of water bill, all right? So, but outside of that nastiness, a bath represented relaxation. Old folk would tell you, put a little Epsom salt in the tub. Epsom salt, young folk, look like little bitty crack rocks. Uh, not, I don't, I'm just telling what it looked like. Don't ask me how, what, how I know what crack rock look like. I watch a whole lot of TV, okay? I'm drug free, but I'm just telling you what it looked like, and you would put that in the tub, and then it would explode, and that would soothe, it would be a soothing bath. 
Some other old folk would tell you to put some rubbing alcohol in the bath water, okay? You know, just in case your muscles are aching or you're sore, all right? All that good stuff. Now, back in the day, we did not have bubble bath, okay? But we had joy. We had palm olive. We had dawn, okay? We knew how to make bubbles because a bath represented relaxation. They even had a commercial back in the day that said, cow gone, go on type it, take me away. That's right, that's right. Cause, because, because a bath represented relaxation. So what am I sharing with you? If you're in church and you know you're going to heaven, relax. You ain't got to be so judgmental and critical of people. Man, let me tell you where it came from. Man, one day me and my manager, we had a show here in Houston, and the Rockets were in the playoffs. The Rockets were in the playoffs, and uh, we stopped at the restaurant. Matter of fact, Papa Do's right there on 610. Y'all, some of y'all know about it, Papa Do's on 610. We had stopped over there, and uh, you know, because we wanted to watch the Rockets. So when we walked in, we went straight to the bar. We went straight to the bar because that's where the TV's at, okay? That's where the TV's at. Don't judge. That's where the TV's at. Relax. That's where the TV's at. TVs are. The TVs are at the bar. So we get over to the bar, and soon as I sat down, there was a lady there looking at me like this. And so finally, I said something to her. I said, excuse me, ma'am, uh, is everything okay? She said, no. I said, what's wrong? She's like, I know you. You claim to be a Christian. You all on that Yolanda Adams morning show, acting like you saved. Hmm? And now you sitting up here in this Papa Do's at the bar. See, it's people like you. You the reason why people don't go to church. I said, what? I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ma'am, first of all, I came to the Papa Do to watch the Rockets. But furthermore, I'm not the reason why people don't go to church. People don't go to church because they don't want to go to church. Okay? Don't put that all on me. All right? I ain't, cause, cause let me tell you something. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't carry that cross. That cross too heavy for me. I'm a forty too long. Okay, that cross is a little too big for me. That ain't even my size. All right, I didn't shed no blood for you. I'm anemic. You can't even receive my blood. So how is it the fact that now I'm the reason why people don't go to church? Yeah, that lady ran me so hot I had to get a drink. I didn't even come there to drink, but she ran, ran my blood pressure up. I had to get me something. Yeah, so I'm trying to go around sharing with people, you need to relax, man. You need to relax. That's why I appreciate Pastor Rudy and Pastor Juanita for inviting me, because you need to laugh, man. You got to laugh sometimes. For instance, I laugh at everything that go on at church, everything, everything. Everything I see at church, I'm writing it down as a joke. People think I'm taking notes. No, I'm writing jokes, Okay. Like, I'm watching this one pastor online, and he kept saying throughout the whole, his, his whole sermon, you missed it. He'll say something fly, you missed it. He'll say something again, oh, y'all done missed it again. I was like, well, if we keep missing it, then obviously, <laughs> that, ain't a, that ain't a us problem, that's a you problem. I mean, I catch everything else. I mean, I, call, I catch a cold, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm catching hell, living here. Uh, I mean, I, I caught chicken pots, but I can't catch your little sermon. I mean, I know you had a whole week to prepare for it and everything, and, 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 and you know, you up on all your little old in your windows, but come on. Throw it to me where I can catch it. Why would you want to keep saying stuff over my head for 45 minutes? It don't even make good sense to me. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Got to laugh at this stuff. Got to laugh, got to laugh, got to laugh. Woo! I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good up in here. Another thing I want to share with y'all. Watch this here. This, is, this here right here, this is going to bless you if you let it. Now, I've been noticing, because I've been watching a lot of church on TV, the thing about this pandemic is you can cheat on your church. I mean, you could just, you could just cheat on your church. You, you can be all the ministries you ever wanted to be a part of. You can now partake in their ministry. You could just flip, just flip, just go back and watch stuff, you know. So I've been going, checking out a lot of these churches. And I've been watching these praise teams uh, you know, I've been watching them because every church still giving you that praise and worship, which is good. 
But uh, I was watching one because they sang a song that was familiar to me, reminded me of when I was in the choir, okay? Believe it or not, I used to be in the choir, you know what I'm saying? And I was in the choir when you had to be able to sing. See, now they just, that's why they don't have choirs now. It's just praise team because everybody could sing. I mean, I mean, just a few people could sing. But back in my day, you had to be able to sing because at choir rehearsal, what they would do, if people was off, They'd be like, oh, wait, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 somebody in the tenor section off. Wait, hold on, who? Somebody off. And they'd be like, uh, go one at a time, one by one, one by one, go one by one. And you'd be like, oh, Lord. And you're like, oh, Lord. We, yeah, it was you. you you're, on, you're on the wrong note. You're on the wrong note. But watch this here. This particular praise team was singing a song that I wasn't, uh, I mean, that I remember, but I was like, oh, it took me back to when I was in the choir. So, so back when I was in the choir, we used to sing this little old song, right? Oh, Lord, we give you praise. And, oh, Lord, we bless your name. And, we lift our voices to say thank you. And then to get to this part, for your goodness. And your mercy toward us. And my ain't lying, the church used to be going off. Church would go off. Well, we had this little praise team, or back then they were just choir director. He going to tell us, I don't want y'all to say good. I want y'all to say good. I said, what? He said, don't say for your goodness. Say for your goodness. Now, I done went to college, y'all. I ain't the smartest cat, but I know how to pronounce good. And uh, I told him, I said, man, that ain't how you pronounce good. It, uh, you know, good is, is good. He said, well, if you're going to be in this choir, you're going to say good. I say, well, goodbye, because I'm not about to be up here messing over the English vocabulary, all these words. I'm not about to do that, all right? But they was up there, the choir, they was up there jamming and all that. Another thing I got to notice by, you know, cheating on my church, going everywhere is, you know, Folk, normally on Sundays, they color coordinate. They color coordinate most times, you know. Now, they still ain't together, but they, they get close, you know, because most times what they'll do, you know, when you're in the praise team, they'll tell you, hey, what are we going to wear Sunday? Because they don't wear robes no more. So what they'll do, they'll say, hey, Sunday, wear, uh, wear green and, 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 and denim. You know, they'll throw that out there and then they'll get on stage and you have all type of greens up here. Uh, then they, they thinking they don't want a card, but they not. OK, but what I've noticed now is everybody wearing what they want to wear. I ain't lying. I saw one church, the girl still had a bonnet on. I said, did she did? I, I know when the, when the pandemic, but <laughs> don't she want to take the bonnet off? She got a bunny on up there. I said, oh, my God, she going right back to sleep. They, they, they must say, listen here, listen, listen, we need you to come, sing these two songs, and go back. And I already know what she said. Well, I'm going to tell y'all right now, uh, I ain't changing clothes. Okay, I done wrap my hair. I mean, you know how they do. <laughs> she had a bunny on up there singing for the Lord. I mean, hey, you know, I guess it is come as you are, you know, for some folk, for some folk, for some folk. All right, I'm getting ready. Watch this here because I want to show you something. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. You know in church, when the pastor say he about to close, that's just, he just setting you up for a longer sermon, okay? She just setting you up for a longer sermon. That's what my daddy used to do. I'm about to close. 30 minutes later, I'm getting ready to close. 15 minutes later, as I'm on my way to my seat. All that old type of stuff. Lies, lies, lies. Speaking things that are not as though they were. Okay? But I want to end with this here on this particular Sunday. Again, I want to say thank you all to all of you out there in the virtual land. Amen. I want to say thank you to all the ghosts that are in here. That's the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's just regular ghost. <laughs> All your spirits, the remnants of your spirits, they are in here, okay? 
Okay, I still, believe it or not, while I'm up here, I hear people who used to yell stuff out at me, and they're not in here. But I hear you. I hear you in your spirit, in the spirit. But this is how I would like to end on this particular Sunday. This month, I will be married on the 23rd, 23 years. 23. This is a Michael Jordan anniversary, a Michael Jordan anniversary. Me and my wife, we're going to be celebrating 23 years on the 23rd. The reason why I bring this up right now is because uh, me and this girl, my wife, you know, but this girl, me and this girl, you know, we grew up right here. Our marriage grew up right here at St. John downtown. This is why our marriage grew up. Matter of fact, we came here together and then separated and got back together. Oh, I'm finna bless somebody right now because I already know. I already know. You're like, where you going? Where you going? Finna help you right here. Got to tell y'all the story about when me and Erica separated as I closed. It's one of the best stories ever. So we were tripping, you know. I was being arrogant and she was being whatever she was being, but you know, we was young and just like, we felt like we had chose each other. We were wrong. I was like, uh, I picked the wrong one. And she was probably like, oh, I picked the wrong one as well. And so we came to the conclusion one day, we're going to get a divorce. So we split up. We split up. We was living over here on Fannin. I gave Erica all the furniture in the house. I said, hey, man, take everything. Because my daddy told me a long time ago, if you ever split with your woman, don't be fighting over no little black and white TV. Don't be fighting over who get the pots and the pans. Just give everything. Be a man and start over. And so anyway, Erica went her way. I went my way. But let me tell you how it happened. Y'all, I was at the house chilling. And uh, Erica came home from work. And my boy was over there, one of my best friends. And she came in the door. She was mad. I don't know if she was mad from her job. I don't know if she was mad thinking about me all day. But she came in the house huffing and puffing. Came right in there, boom, closed the door. Told my friend, Maurice, you need to go. Marcus, we need to talk. Told my friend, Maurice, I said, say, man, sit down. I said, who, who she think she talking to? How long we been friends? Maurice was like, since 84. I was like, I just met her in 96. You sit down. But it's good to have good friends because my boy was like, nah, man, let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. You need to take care of your business, handle your business with your wife. So I walked my boy out to his car. At that time, me and Eric, we was living on the seventh floor. I walked my man downstairs, dap him up. I holla at you. Well, coming back to the apartment, there's a long hallway. As I'm walking down the hallway, I see all these clothes in the hall. I'm so arrogant, I'm thinking, ooh, somebody gonna be mad. All they clothes out here in this hallway, ooh, somebody about to be mad. As I'm getting closer to our door and I'm closer to the clothes, I'm seeing, oh, this is my stuff. Uh, these are my Kenneth Cole shoes. Uh, oh, 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 this is my polo shirt. And so now I tried to get in the house. But I left my keys, my phone, I left everything in the, in the apartment, and she put that other deadbolt lock on the door. And so I'm up there, I'm saying, open the door. Erica behind that door. Now, you don't wanna be here? You ain't got to be here. Bye. I was like, girl, let me in this door. White people walking by. I'm like, hey, 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 how y'all doing? This is how we play. This is how we play. We, we, we play. This how, now we just playing the game we play. Open the door, girl. She was like, no. I was like, man, I need to get my keys. She was like, I'm going to throw them over the balcony. I said, oh, my goodness. So she didn't open the door. I stood there for about 10, 15 minutes. I had the bright idea to go call HPD, Houston Police Department. I'm stupid. You can tell I ain't never been in trouble. I go downstairs. Instead of just telling the people at the leasing office, hey, man, come handle this here, I call HPD. When HPD get there, I put on my police voice. Hello, sir, how you guys doing? Uh, me and my wife, you know, we just was not fighting, but just having, you know, words, and uh, she's locked me out. I'm, unfortunately, I'm, I'm unable to get in my, uh, my home, and I called you guys, you know, just, you know, make sure everything is cool and everything. So 
We go up the elevator, we walk down the hall, the police walk and they see my clothes and they going, oh, these some nice clothes. This your stuff? I said, <laughs> I didn't call you over here, <laughs> but it's here. I'm trying to get in the highs. So the police knocked on the door. Erica opened the door. When Erica opened that door, y'all, the police went right over to Erica and say, did he touch you? I said, big dog, I called y'all. And for a split second, Erica looked at me. Like, I could get you right now. But luckily, <laughs> she didn't. Then the police turned around and tell me, look here, brother, you got to get all your stuff and get out of here. I said, I called y'all. He said, but hey, on a domestic dispute, we ain't having no dispute. We just, she just locked me out, okay? We ain't having, we ain't wasn't even arguing. He was like, you got to go. So I had to pack up my stuff and I had to leave. I ended with that today because I want to share with you, man, sometimes, because that day I thought that was the end. I thought that was the end. And that was like in year six. But here this month, if the Lord say the same, on the 23rd, we gonna be celebrating 23 years. So when I tell you it ain't over, unto God's sake, it's over. Y'all be blessed. Thank y'all for having me. Marcus D. Wiley. Wow. I hope you all were able to enjoy Marcus Wiley. I want to show him some love and thank him for coming out to bless us. What a beautiful reminder to remind us that it's okay to laugh in this season. It's okay to live and enjoy the little things, the simple things, to just be grateful that we are still here and alive. So we want you to stay encouraged, family. We thank God for you. We thank God that you were able to tune in and worship with us. Remember to stay connected and check out our website, Bible studies. We have virtual experiences for our children and youth. So we have you covered. We love you, family, and there is nothing you can do about it.